So welcome to Ditch the Diet and Face the Feelings. And this month is all about moving through March. So in our group Nourish, we've been having a challenge and each day it's been some days quite easy, some days quite a challenge, but every day just, you know, expanding that comfort zone and talking about the enjoyment of the movement as opposed to, oh, I can't do it. Um, so how's it going for you guys so far? So far, so good. I'm loving this challenge. Uh, it's been a lot of fun for me to just have the motivation to get outside and, and uh, walk a lot. And of course, Bernie, my little dog, loves it too. So that, I don't know, it's been, it's been great. And then doing uh, the kettlebells and stretching and I don't know, it's been a lot of fun. I'm loving it. Good deal. That's great. I have a twist on mine. Um, cause I can't do the, the kettlebells and stuff. Um, but I listened to a recording by, a I don't even remember his name. It was part of, um, an interview with Sonia Ricotta. And, uh, he had said that they did a test on, um, two test groups, one constantly doing exercise, but the other ones visualized twice a day that they were doing exercise that they really loved and really wanted to do. And at the end of the test study, the ones that visualized twice a day actually had built up muscle and endurance. Without having done any exercise at all. Without having done any exercise. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, I cannot <laughs> wait to talk about this. At the end of this month, Sandra, that's fascinating. So my idea is the stuff that I can't do, I'm going to take the days and do the visualization. And I think I probably will do the visualization even on the days that I kind of do the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I will nice. see what happens at the end of the month. Well, this will be an interesting experiment. I, that's true. That's true. Power of um, the mind. Yeah. Mine is pretty standard. I haven't been able to do a lot of extra things, but, uh, you know, hit the gym three days a week. And I did get in a couple of sessions of yoga uh, with my sweetheart this weekend. So that was kind of nice. It was different. Um, and, um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm up walking around, moving around all day. So, and it's snowing or not snowing now, but it's supposed to tonight up to a foot. Sorry. So if I had snowshoes, <laughs> it'd be really cool, I guess. Yeah. Are you new to yoga or is that something that you've been doing for a while? It's I've, I've done it in the past kind of off and on. Uh, I, the part I like, about it the best is the stretching and holding holding the the poses uh just for the focus and the uh the strength building uh, the um the meditation side of yoga not so much uh i'll, I'll learn as i go but uh um it, it's just, it really helps. It's, it's a nice start to the day or end of the day or whenever you can do it. Yeah. You know, well, I, I know today's challenge was go for a walk. And I was like, well, I'm not fitting that in because today I had to get out and do shopping for school supplies because school starts on Monday for us. Um, our school year, <clears throat> because it's summer here at the moment. Yeah. You oh, know. gosh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just, we're, 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 we're in full, full on summer at the moment. It's rather, it's starting to get hot. You know, like you guys have that August, September where it's really hot before it cools down. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got that part of summer right now. Um, oh. Yeah. And Although it never actually gets cold here. So, you know, what am I talking about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all it'll do is rain eventually. But um, so today was about getting school supplies and all of that. 
And when I saw that that's what I had for the afternoon, I was like, well, that's going to be my walk because by the time I'm done doing that, I'll be done. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sure enough, because of course I was accompanied by a five-year-old, I might have had to walk a bit more than, than I intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. Yeah. But, you know, it's that whole thing of accepting that, okay, so I didn't go exercise. But I moved. And, and, you know, I was talking to Nina yesterday about how we define exercise and what we think it has to be and how hard it is supposed to be. And I was saying to her, you know, when, when I played football, I was training, you know, I was, I was going to football practice and then I was playing on Sundays and sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. And I was running two or three times a week, but I wasn't exercising. I was just training for football. And that was enough. It's like when we were growing up, we never exercised. We just were busy all the time. Exactly. We did and a lot of movement all day long. So Exactly. And, and I said to her, you know, when I was, at, you know, in school um, PE, I was lucky that most of the time my PE teacher just happened to be my soccer coach at school. And so we could generally convince him to give us a soccer ball and well, you get all of them doing that, and we'll just play soccer. You know, um, there were some things we couldn't talk our way out of, but, you know, to a large extent, you know, there was a lot of things I could talk my way out of having to do, um, which I considered exercise <laughs> as, opposed to, nice. as, as opposed to taking a soccer ball and dribbling it up and down uh, the football field. <laughs> you know, and, and it is all about mindset because, like, when we were doing cross country running, I did not consider cross country running to be exercise. It was just going for a run. I think the big thing too, though, is that we really need to look at how are we viewing our exercise? Are we doing it because we absolutely love it and enjoy it? Or are we doing it with the idea of I have to, I yes. should, I need to, and all we're really doing is throwing in the stress response into our body. And oh, that's fascinating. No amount, yeah. no amount of exercise is going to change what your body's going to do if you've got that I need to, I should, I have to. So and rather you're doing than something that you're not enjoying. So the rather obligatory than, negative mindset. Yeah. And, and I would say that you've already gone into that adrenaline fight flight sort of scenario as opposed to, you know, not that you're gonna totally relax and stretching the muscles and everything. Could you save my dinner from the cat? Kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> I think the kitty cat had it. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm naked. No. <laughs> I think what oh, we forget, yeah. too, is that the go. minute we, yeah, we don't need this, our fight and flight genetics came from eons ago when mm -hmm. we actually really needed to flee from that tiger or that lion or we needed that burst of energy to kill the musk ox so we could have supper um, but our body is so programmed now because we live in such a constant state of stress our body has no idea how to get out of that stress yeah response it's a constant yeah. and we've actually i just read some stuff on this we actually what we've really done is we've altered our genetics and our hypothalamus mm -hmm. that's actually saying huh, you're in stress we ain't doing nothing else we're in stress and we just keep raising our whole yeah genetics our whole epigenetics yeah. the whole thing of our body 
What about the people for whom exercise is a stress release? If they love it, then it's going to work great for them. I don't know if it, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who exercise who don't love it, but they definitely benefit and feel better by doing the exercise. Well, I think it's also one, the mindset and mm -hmm. are they celebrating what their body can do as opposed to going past that limit into a stress zone of, mm -hmm. oh, I have to. I mean, like I know for me, I, I was laughing with Nina because on Saturday when I took the dogs out for a run and I had Isabella on the bike, she was too far ahead of me. And I was like, Isabella, slow down. And she's like, run faster. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And I was like, oh my God. I, you know, I was like, I cannot run any faster. I mean, we, we'd already done more than half of our run. I was already tiring on the way back. And it was, it was starting to get sore. And I was like, I can't run any faster. But then I was like, I remembered, I was like, well, if you're celebrating what your body can do, how fast can I go that is still an, a celebration as opposed to stress? And it was a wonderful thing because then I, I found a new pace. It wasn't a really real, it wasn't a really fast pace, but it was a consistent pace of, okay, what can I do? Yeah. And that happens. Yeah. Um, when in the, the gym for me as well, because it's, it's real easy to go to failure yes. and then you're just shot. <clears throat> you're, you, you may as well just go home. So to find that point where you push yourself a little further without, um, totally tiring yourself before you're finished. And like you right. said, and that, with, without once, injury, once you find that. It's such a sweet spot. Yeah. And and then it just yeah. feels good because then you've you've accomplished something. So you're kind of patting yourself yeah. on the back for that. And yeah. and you just know, okay, I I crossed that that barrier that I've been deal fighting with for the last two, three weeks, and I went beyond it. So yay for me. Let's let's keep going. Yeah, that yeah. happened to me on Saturday when I went out to do my 10,000 steps and I, I just did an out and back walk and I figured I'd walk out two and a half miles and then back. It was, it was actually seven miles on the way back. Or no, uh, but anyway, on the way out, you know, my, my shins were really tightening up and my calves were screaming at me. And somewhere after I turned between like two and a half and three miles, all of a sudden the pain was gone. So I walked through all of the pain that was trying to get me to stop and just kept going. And then for the, you know, so for the last two miles home, it didn't hurt at all. And then I sat down for nice. an hour and then I could barely stand, but that's a different story. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah that, then I sat down with a tub of ice cream and said, look, you earned this. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think that what you've said, Sarah and Mike, is you didn't start, though, your exercise with a negative. Yeah, no. right. No, I was excited. Right. That's, about that. that's the difference, yeah. I think, is you didn't start with a negative. You didn't start with the should, the need, the have to. Yes. Yes. Although I have to say there are times when I know I should go for a walk and I don't want to, but then I do and then they still feel better. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. There are those times when it's like, oh man, okay, I'll go. And typically it's turned out to be some of the best workouts. You know, yes. once you get there, it's like, okay, let's focus, let's move forward. And then everything else that you were kind of stumbling over is behind you and away you go. Yeah. I mean, and, and I have to say this, when I started karate in, oh my goodness, bye, okay, um, <laughs> when, is it too much to ask that you lock the door on your way out? No. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, you know, I remember when I was starting karate back in 98 and I had been out of exercise for a couple, I mean, I was doing exercise, but I wasn't hugely fit at the time. I remember for the first three to four weeks, because I was training five days a week intentionally of I'm going to get my fitness to a certain level where I can actually enjoy this. And I remember I was tossing back Tylenol every morning when I woke up and knowing full well that this is really bad for my kidneys, um, but I won't go do exercise tonight if I don't do this now. <laughs> You know, now, now I look at that and I was like, yeah, there was a whole lot of alternatives you could have followed other than just popping a pill, but you know, so be it. But what it did for me was it got me through those four weeks of initial muscle pain to building up enough resistance to actually be able to do a whole, you know, the, the, the full workout. I remember in week one, literally slipping over and falling in my own pool of sweat. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really yeah. gracefully, too. Really <laughs> gracefully. <laughs> um, but, you know, I wouldn't do that to myself now. I mean, I might do the five days of training a week and put something on my legs and arms for the pain, but I wouldn't pop two Tylenols. So you what's know? your favorite type of movement? Oh. That's hard. Um, I love katas of karate because of the whole mindfulness, the almost meditative state of it. Um, I love kettlebells because I just think they're fun. Mm -hmm. And for me, there's nothing like a good run. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's hard to pick one. I'm not sure I would. It's really funny because I was posting about, you know, fitness and stuff on my thing, thinking that I'm really unfit at the moment. And one of my friends from my childhood posted, he's like, yeah, it's not like you've ever been unfit. And I was like, oh, wait, but I am so much over, I'm, you know, I'm so overweight and I'm sitting there going, yeah, you probably got an extra 15 pounds on you. <laughs> You know, so it is all relative. It's what, you know, what are you used to? What do you expect to do? And, you know, me not being able, you know, if I couldn't run two kilometers, I'd be, oh my God, I'm just, you know, this is just useless. Whereas for somebody else going, I can run two kilometers, you know, so it is, it's all relative. It's like, what is your current state? And I mean, I can remember with a friend of mine, oh, years ago, 2005, 2006, somewhere around there, we were doing salsa lessons twice a week for three hours each time. Awesome. And that was awesome fitness. Yeah. yeah. I'd have to say if I, if I had to pick, mine would be walking or hiking and the other one would be dancing. Yeah. which I don't do very often, but I love to dance. So if I just for yeah. the for the expression of movement, I would say that is definitely one yeah. of my favorite yeah. things to do. I mean, like if you give me some great merengue music, I'll dance for two hours. Sure. How about you? You know. Anna? What's your favorite kind of movement? Mine? Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to run also. Um, which is something I never, ever thought I would do. Uh, but I, I, when I was doing it, I, I did enjoy it because it was really a uh, uh, kind of a conquest for me to be able to do that. And then it got to the point where one summer and fall, it was literally two miles a morning. And it was just part of my morning routine. Um, and that was, that was really enjoyable at the time. Um, as far as, you know, being in movement all the time, mm -hmm. I would say that's, that was pretty cool. I don't know if I'll do it again. Um, never know. Yeah. How about you, Santa? My favorite is hiking in the nature. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's my favorite. And then 
maybe someday I'll get back on a pair of skates and nice. see cool. if I can do so some what, of those twirls. What's your favorite kind of exercise to visualize? Um, with this one, I think I'm going to exercise riding a bike. Nice. And, and lifting some weights. Those are the two that I think that are really going to be um, an interesting experiment. Yeah, definitely. Ah, cool. And I'm going to yeah. visualize that my shoulder and is, all the stuff is that able I'm to do on. the whole full movement full with movement. weight. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you believe yeah. that this will work? Do I think it's going to work? No, do you believe it? Do I believe it? Yeah, I believe that it can. Um, I read a, read a little thing the other day on, and you probably heard the story where the guy was working, he'd worked all his life with the trains and he was an inspector of the boxes, the refrigerated cars. And his biggest fear had been that he would get stuck and locked into one of the refrigerated cars and that he would freeze to death. And that, that was his whole fear for all the years that he worked with the train. Oh. And he ended up, one night, he ended up getting locked into a refrigerated car. And he actually, when they found him in the morning and they did the autopsy on him, he had actually died with the same symptoms that you would as a human freezing to death and the problem was the car wasn't even turned uh -huh. on for refrigeration it was a normal powerful our mind is oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> yeah. the placebo effect right there yeah wow. yep oh my goodness what wow so he died of hypothermia therapy. when it wasn't actually cold yeah yeah yeah. And he had Dang. actually written to his daughter and he had told her that his biggest fear of working on the trains was his fear of getting locked into a car and freezing to death. Oh my God. How oh, our minds work, good. right? So yeah, I really, yes. I'm excited to try this and see <laughs> <laughs> our minds are. <laughs> well, but I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure all of us have read the story of the basketball team where they yeah. split it up into three groups and one group practiced daily for 20 or 30 minutes shooting the hoops. Another part simply visualized doing that every day and the third group did nothing. So at the end of however long this period of training was, the group that had done nothing, unsurprisingly, had not improved at all. The group that had done the daily training of getting on the court and shooting hoops had improved their scores by about 24%. And the ones that had done only visualization but not been on the court had improved their scores by 23%. <laughs> so, you know, it's that whole thing of, okay, they didn't actually get out there and do it. You got a 23% visualization. So imagine if you're visualizing and doing. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You um, know, that's what uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger would has has said when he when he would lift he would visualize the muscle growing. And he said, development ha happened much faster than if you were not in tune with that. So yeah. I, yeah. I do the same thing. I try to see it, watch it grow, feel it, really tune into it. Yeah. So why not? Why not? Absolutely. And, and so I think it is, it's, it's that celebration of what our body could do, but also, you know, like I know Sandra a few months ago had very limited movement in her shoulder. And then she started visualizing that movement improving and it has improved without actually any type of therapy or anything else, just with the visualization exercises. 
it's actually better considering that for two years. Uh, the first year of therapy was three times a week um, for the whole year. And then I cut it back to once a week. And I did no therapy for six months um, because it was just a waste of my time to go and have a TENS machine put on my shoulder when I can put it on here at home. Um, <laughs> but I started visualizing uh, in November, early end of, uh, end of September, early October, I started visualizing that the whole shoulder had full range of motion and it's almost there. Yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. Good work. And, and so, I mean, I would say to anybody that's thinking, Oh, this is what I can't do. Well, start visualizing yourself doing it and then start slowly. This is you know, what I can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and do, do that little bit you can. Yeah. My uh, daughter-in-law is a professional triathlete. And it's a sport that I really was not familiar with until I got to know her. And um, so I was asking her just about the mental aspects of running a race. I'm like, yeah, because to me, it just sounds like, torture and boredom but to her she loves it and I'm like so what's going on in your head when you're in the run part and she said you know I'm just like focused on where I want to be and then I spot somebody ahead of me and then I make that my race she's like so I go from where I am to pass that person and then I find another person to pick off and she said I just do like all these little mini races that eventually yeah. add up to one total race so exactly mindset. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, as we, as we start to realize that, you know, um, everybody is wherever they're at right now. And I know for me, one of, one of my heroes at the moment is Sieta Jones, who's in the nourish group mm -hmm. and she's taken on a challenge for herself by herself of I'm going to, get to a fit and healthy. I'm not sure that she's put a number on that. I don't actually know, but I know that what she is doing is that, you know, she had a small knee injury, so she wasn't able to do one sort of exercise. So, okay, I'm not doing that kind of exercise right now, but I'm continuing. You know, so everything that I can't do with my knee, that's fine, but I can still do the upper body. Um, and it was really encouraging to see her. And I was like, what is your excuse? What the hell <laughs> is your excuse? You know? And, and so I think that, you know, we've just got to come to that realization of, you know, I am my limitation. Yeah. That, that's what's limiting me. That belief that I can't do X. Well, okay, so I can't. I'm not at a stage right now where I can go back out and do 10 Ks. Actually, I probably could, but I feel really like shit for days afterwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, no, not, not in that kind of condition, you know. But at the same time, it's it, the, okay, well, let's get back to there. And then once I'm back there, well, then let's work on the 12 case, you know, and you just slowly build up, up, up from that, there again. You know, I have no interest in doing a half marathon, but... I do look at, okay, well, look, from my house to the end of the causeway is about seven kilometers. So eventually I want to get to the stage where I'm running 15, where I'm running from my house down my road and then onto the causeway and all the way down to the lost island and back. Nice. You know, yeah, because it's a beautiful run. <laughs> You know, back in January when we did the gratitude challenge, one that really stuck with me is to express gratitude for every step that I can take, mm -hmm. you know, and just to really 
be grateful for the body that I do have and that I can move it. I can get up and I can go and do things. You know, uh, gosh, I really do have deep gratitude for that. So I try to focus on that too when I'm out there doing my steps, just like, yeah. thank you. Thank and, you. And, and for you, I know in recovering from fibromyalgia, that is yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, the same way that for Sandra, recovering arm movement and shoulder, you know, rotation is huge. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we have once again, of course, just talked our way <laughs> past 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All of this month, we are going to be talking about moving. Just being and movement, enjoyment of movement. Next week, we're going to talk, obviously, about team sport versus individual sport, maybe dancing. Just that discovery process of finding something you can enjoy. And obviously, come join us in the group Nourish, because that's where we have the challenge happening. And every day, we're just going to pop up today's challenge. That might be get outside and go for a run. It might be go for a swim, get on the water, um, go skiing, go ice skating. Um, I, I guess it depends on what water you've got. Ne- what, what water you've got close to you? How hard it is. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> um, you know. So I, yeah, I, I'm. Or, or, or go for a walk in the rain. That would count, wouldn't, wouldn't it? You know, there's your water sport. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Puddle jumping, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, okay. <laughs> but, you know, every day there's going to be a challenge included of, you know, let's try this. And some of them are really simple. You know, some of them are just one yoga pose. Um, others are a little bit more challenging, but we're just trying to introduce, you know, um, different modalities of what movement might be so that everybody in the community has that that chance to try something that maybe they hadn't thought of trying and see oh wait I do enjoy this movement this kind of movement is what I was looking for Mm -hmm. you know and that's really what this is is about is is finding something that really you, you do love and you can get out there and do and say, yeah, I actually want to go and do this. And I would love to see more and more people posting their stuff in the nourish and show us how you're moving this month. Um, you know, I've been trying to get my little lives up there. They don't have to be long. They don't even have to be videos. If, if you just want to post a picture. Just of photos. It, you know, exactly. Yeah. What they're doing, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm very yeah. enthused about all this. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I, and it's, and it's so much fun to see where, what people are doing, especially, you know, if you're getting outdoors and it's wet and rainy or it's snow or whatever, Hey, take a photo, let share, share it, you know, let us know what you're up against getting outdoors. Um, or, you know, okay. So you went to the gym or maybe you just danced in your living room. Hi. <laughs> Share the YouTube video of what you were dancing to. (laughs) Well, thank you all so much. Um, This has been fabulous as always. And we will see you all inside of Nourish. See you in the funny papers. (laughs) See you all later. All right. See you next week.